In terms of uh, the growth of the DNA testing market globally, I mean, it's been significant. To put it in context, uh, Amazon on Black Friday week last year sold more than 1 million DNA tests just on that week. Um, all our data shows, our internal customer data, as well as external published peer review uh, research, again, that it, when an individual uh, does a DNA test and they get given some sort of advice, whether it's nutrition or fitness advice, uh, the adherence is greater. And because adherence is greater, they ultimately get results. It is a, a universal human truth that you all want to have a better life. And if you are empowered with knowledge about yourself and how you, your, your, your body and your genes uh, function and respond to different uh, external factors like diet and exercise and stress and sleep, uh, that for most people they will use that to optimize and to improve their lives. DNA test is quite simple. It's 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 a it's a painless experience. Uh, you do a simple mouth swab. You send that back to our office here in uh, in Johannesburg. And what we do is we put you on a a, a digital health journey. We like to call it. So, um, you know, within approximately 10 days, you get a report from our laboratory. Uh, the report focuses on nutrition. Uh, what's the best diet for your body, for example? Uh, and fitness, what's the best way to exercise to get the best results? Uh, sleep, you know, how does your body, uh, what sort of person are you? Are you a morning person or a night person? Uh, you know, stress, you know, are you a warrior or a strategist? You get the DNA test, you, you also get a, a very comprehensive report, you get an online experience. Um, we have a team of uh, health coaches, uh, all qualified dietitians, uh, as well as sports scientists. We believe uh, you know, that actually genetics is only part of the picture. Approximately 30% is genetics and 70% is your lifestyle. So if we can use the genetics to nudge customers to change their lifestyle, that's got to be a great thing. And these bits of information start to help you think differently about the way you engage with your own health. So I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, I this morning already have had two cups of coffee. It's likely by the end of the day I'll have eight cups of coffee because I love coffee and you know, I feel pretty okay from it. Um, my wife on the other hand, she will have two cups of coffee and she will not touch another cup um, you know, after 11 a.m. And genetically, my wife is a slow metabolizer of caffeine. And it's not coffee bothers, it's just caffeine. I'm a fast metabolizer of caffeine. So I now know actually, based on this caffeine gene, how fast I metabolize it, what to do with caffeine on a daily basis. Now, I talk about caffeine, but it applies to so many other areas. It applies to uh, salt sensitivity, alcohol sensitivity, fat sensitivity, uh, refined carbohydrate sensitivity. And knowing these bits and pieces of information helps me on a daily basis adjust my lifestyle. In terms of uh, South Africans generally, uh, you know, having different diet crazes and, and, and referencing, for example, the, the Bantine diet, which, which people were, uh, you know, really following and, and, and paying a lot of attention to, or and now is, as, as I understand, the ketogenic diet, um, DNA testing is quite different. And what do I mean by that? Um, we tell you what diet, you know, DNA fit tell you, what, or nutrigenomic testing generally, i.e. a DNA test for the purpose for what diet you should be, um, you know, going on. Uh, we actually use your DNA to tell you that. So let me give you a, a very practical example talking about um, DNA testing with DNA fit nutrigenomics um, versus the ketogenic diet. So we did a study, um, it's due to be published. Um, we looked at 200 individuals. In that cohort of individuals, um, half of them did a ketogenic diet and the other half did a DNA fit nutrigenomic diet. So we again, from your DNA, tell you what type of diet you should have, low carb, low fat, Mediterranean, for example. A ketogenic diet in this example clearly worked, but over a long term period, the individuals that understood their DNA had better success. Why? Talking to my point earlier, if you understand your body's genetic blueprint and you know that this is really personalized for you, it, it increases adherence for the long term. Company. Um, we work with a number of Olympic athletes who are on our team. Uh, we have a shareholder, Rio Ferdinand, a famous uh, uh, athlete himself, because what's happening globally is an understanding clearly that, that from a fitness performance perspective, your genes can make a real difference if you understand how, to, uh, how your body responds to exercise. So 
were the first company in the world to do a, a genetic exercise intervention study. Uh, we took 100 people um, and we did a DNA test uh, for all of them, but not all of them were given their results. In fact, in fact, no one was given their results until, until, until the end. And in sports science principles, what we did was, for measurements, we did two tests. One was a counter movement jump, which is where you sort of jump up in the air and it measures essentially explosive power from sports science principles. And the other test uh, was an aero bike three test, which is an endurance test. So we measured everybody on those two well-established metrics and we put them on a 12-week program. But what we did was half of the cohorts were given a genetically matched program. So if you were uh, given uh, a percentage of your power versus endurance, as we do in our report, we then guide your exercise accordingly. And what we did was at the end of the intervention program, we re-measured everybody again and we found that the individuals that were given the genetically guided direction had three times performance benefit on those two metrics. It means that if you exercise to the way your body is designed, in the way your genetics tell you to, you're much more likely to get better results. Talking about the idea of uh, preventative health and precision medicine, the, the world is fast moving from the concept of one drug for everybody to one drug per person. And that's because we all respond differently uh, to, to, in this case, medication. So I obviously gave examples about uh, caffeine and I spoke about fitness and nutrition generally, but the same applies from a clinical context uh, in terms of, in this case, it was we talk about something called pharmacogenomics, which is the way your body responds to different drugs. So Estonia, um, population, I think about 1.2 million people, in 2001 started creating a, a national DNA biobank that included their complete digital health record. So to contextualize that, if you were born in 2001, you would get obviously a DNA test, uh, you obviously have a, a medical digital health record, and now, you know, how many years later, 18 years later, if I, if I am Estonian and I go to the doctor, that doctor knows what my genetic response is to drugs, they understand my complete digital health lifestyle, my history, and it starts to actually help that treatment become a lot more personalized. question always comes up about data, how do insurance companies use this data, are they going to uh, exclude me, are they going to underwrite differently against me, where is it used? And categorically as a company we don't share um, per personal information with insurance companies. Sure we do share anonymized cohort information, I think that's important to do, but personal information is kept personal and it's not shared with the insurer or in fact anyone. The results that you get from this uh, DNA fit test has no bearing uh, to insurance, so it just really there's no positive or negative, it just tells you how your body responds to different things. So in terms of insurance and how we underwrite insurance currently, it really has no bearing. Very importantly for us is that in the long term, if clients are living a better life, it will improve the life, uh, life outcomes, which to us as an insurer is what the biggest benefit is. So there is something in it for us as, a, as an insurer, but also as an industry, we believe that if we move towards more personalization of this insurance to clients, it will lead to better outcomes for uh, the industry as a whole.